So now I'm going to attempt to share my screen. So let's go do that. All right, so can somebody chime in and just say, are you seeing the words tracking and measuring now? Yes, I see it. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Never know with these things and I could be talking my leg off and people are like, no, I, I'm still looking at that pot on your stove <laughs> or something. Okay, so my name is Bert Harold. I'm a dietitian. I work at Karelian Clinic and I'm glad that some of you uh, came by tonight to watch my little talk here and a little cooking demo as well. So this is one in a series of videos I do throughout the year and uh, roughly every other month, sometimes every month, it just sort of depends on how much I have time for and, and what we're doing. Um, today's topic is gonna be on tracking and measuring. And so weight loss strategies for tracking and measuring, and then again, the, the healthy meal at the end there. So there's a few little logos here of some popular calorie tracking tools, and, uh, and then a little scale there and some food scales. So uh, this is the series of classes. Um, and so January we launched this year with the Mediterranean meal pattern. Um, I believe the meal that night was spaghetti. And tonight we are doing tracking and measuring. The meal tonight will be a vegetarian dish. I don't do a lot of vegetarian dishes. I think I've done one or two here and there. It's kind of good to kind of put those in the mix sometimes, I think. Um, what's looking like for the schedule the rest of this year, just FYI, and this is subject to change, but I think more or less this is what we're looking at now. Um, May 25th is going to be in person. Um, there's a diabetes center that's um, sort of on, uh, it's on Jefferson near Elm Street, not too far from the community hospital, so you may kind of be familiar with that. I don't know, but um, it's kind of a glass building, three or four stories tall. And Carillion has kind of a diabetes center in there. So there's a kitchen in that building, and that's where we're going to be. And um, we've had a couple of classes in there. Well, we've had one class in there since the pandemic. It was co-hosted by a group from uh, Community Health and Out Health Outreach. Um, but I, I have not myself hosted solo a class since before COVID. So this will be sort of a, a groundbreaking sort of thing. It'll be kind of fun to get back into it again. And so uh, emotional eating, May 25th, July 20th, physical activity. Those are both in person at the Diabetes Center. September, I'm going to go back to virtual, I believe. Just works a little better for my schedule on that particular month. And then October, we're going to go back to in person, healthy choices for the holidays. So, and just another thing, you know, July and October, it's looking like I'm going to have some student health uh, help. Sorry. There's a graduate, some graduate students from Virginia Tech's nutrition program that are going to kind of co-present and help with some of the, some of the uh, classes, those two classes. So that could be kind of fun. And they always do a really good job. And so that, that'll be kind of a fun uh, schedule, I think. Okay, so tracking calories, tracking activity, tracking weight. So why do we want to track? And this may seem obvious, you know, I, I get told all the time, you know, Bert, this is this is all common sense, what you're talking about here. This is not rocket science, et cetera, et cetera. But believe it or not, there are people in this world that they really do not believe in the activity of tracking calories, especially. Um, so there is, there, there, there's not a lot of controversy, but there is some about it. So I like to kind of cover, you know, why we think this is a good thing to do in general. So this is from, you know, more or less our, for this, for this particular field, helping, you know, weight management, helping people clinically with weight and losing weight. This is from a consensus guideline document from American Heart Association, College of Cardiology, the Obesity Society, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Basically many, many professional organizations in the clinical realm got together and agreed on some consensus guidelines for how practitioners, you know, doctors, dietitians, whatever, should um, practice weight management with patients. So best practices, best thoughts about how to go about this, expert panels and everything. That was kind of a foundational, almost kind of a procedural document. There's been uh, updates to that over the years. There was one that just came out from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics early this year but they really still kind of base a lot of the guidelines on that initial document. That one may get refreshed again 
in a more wholesale way. I don't know. There's there's no like update as far as when that will happen. But anyway, I just want to give you some idea that this is not just, you know, well, Dr. Phil said this or Dr. Oz or, you know, this was on whatever the Today Show or whatever. This is this is really about as, as solid as you can get as far as evidence for what to do in this in this world with weight management. So comprehensive lifestyle interventions usually provide a structured behavior change program that includes regular self-monitoring of food intake, physical activity, and weight. So these same behaviors are recommended to maintain lost weight. And that's another key thing too, not just for the loss, with the addition of frequent, i.e. weekly or more often monitoring of body weight. So again, another little sentence there, weekly or more often. It used to be, I know in some circles, you know, there's this sort of panic about weighing ourselves and like, oh my God, you know, if you weigh more than once a week, that's a uh, that's an obsession. <laughs> um, so, you know, um, so this one paragraph, you can pick apart a lot of different parts. We can analyze it, talk about it for probably an hour, just this one paragraph. Honestly, it's crazy, but it's true. I mean, there's so many aspects to these things. Um, weighing again, I mean, uh, we think current guidelines are that weighing yourself, if you can, if you can stomach the numbers and the scale, you know, once a day in the morning, typically, um, is a good idea. Now, do you have to do every single day of your life? No, I mean, you don't, you don't have to, but really multiple times a week is a good idea when you're engaged in weight loss, especially. Maintenance is a little different, but when you're trying to really focus on loss, it really helps to get that data. Weighing yourself 10 times a day, no, that's that's not really helpful. Um, you really can't piece apart what you're looking at with that. The fluid changes and you know defecation and sweating and whatever things happen during the day when you, you eat food taken you know it's just going to be up and down up and down and there's no there, there's really no benefit in that particular activity so anyway just thought i'd diverge into that a little bit that's part of tracking so uh tracking calories so the calorie part of this how do we go about it so th there's really um there's a few different ways. There's not a whole lot of ways here, but each way has many components. So what I call indirect is using a menu plan or a meal service. So, you know, if you can just think logically, you know, if you were eating frozen meals all the time or you have a service, maybe you pay money for that they bring you meals, those are calorie controlled. And if you know, well, I've got 1500 calories or 16 or whatever per day to is my budget, you can pretty easily add up the numbers on the backs of these boxes of these meals that you're getting and, you know, make sure that you're kind of staying within those numbers. There's a few out there. Um, HelloFresh is one that I intend to try, and I was hoping to actually try it before tonight's talk. I did not make it. <laughs> um, but uh, there's a lot, well, I would say a lot. There's a few of my patients, particularly those who seem to be in a more medical background, doctors and uh, nurses and stuff have been trying HelloFresh. They speak pretty highly of it. I think it's probably, you know, I think you can probably get pretty healthy meals that way. The downside I'm hearing is it's fairly expensive. Um, but but that's one option. They have a, uh, they have a calorie smart uh, apparently option there. So I'm gonna check that out, do my own research on that. It'll be kind of interesting. Um, Magic Kitchen is a website that you will find medical diets. So things like for kidney disease, for instance, kidney disease patients, especially, you know, if you're on dialysis um, or, or kind of like late stage kidney disease, those are very tough diets. Um, if you've known anyone and like that in that situation, and it's it's not a fun situation to be in for sure, but those diets are very, very tough to meet the guidelines. Very hard to know how much phosphorus or potassium you're getting. Um, there's dietitians who their entire specialty in life is just trying to help kidney disease patients manage their potassium and their medications and whatnot in these dialysis centers. I mean, that's that's a that's a specialty by itself just to do that because it takes a lot of expertise. So Magic Kitchen is a great resource for that, but they also have diabetic diets. They also have heart healthy diets. They've got general sort of Mediterranean kind of diet in there. So, um, you know, that's another option. Um, and, uh, and they have calories, of course. So for weight loss, 
you know, you can use them for that as well. And uh, you figure out the calorie numbers on that. Some of these other ones, I am not on emails, plan to eat. Um, some of my other dietitian colleagues have mentioned these. Um, you can kind of go in and, and purchase ingredients and make grocery lists on their site. They're kind of interesting. I won't go into them in great, great detail because I have not tried them myself again. Um, I know they exist. I have not had patients use those particular ones either, but they look pretty intriguing. Um, so it looks like it could be a good way to go. Schwann's is a, just a company that's been around for eons, I guess, and they have um, what they call Live Smart, and they have a few healthy food options. Now, I don't think they have a lot <laughs> of healthy options, but they do have a few. So, so that's kind of what I would call sort of the indirect way. Um, there's also menu plans, and I provide menu plans to my patients. Um, you know, you can Google search. They're actually kind of hard to find, actually, um, but you can find some menu plans out there. So it's like a meal plan, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and it's all controlled to be within a certain calorie goal. So you can do it that way. If you're just somebody, it's like, man, I, I hate using apps. I hate recording stuff. I don't like numbers or whatever the case may be. Um, these menus these kind of services, they can fill a little bit of a void and kind of help those patients out a little bit. The vast majority of people, especially in 2023, um, and my patients that I work with are using apps. So apps on your smartphone, they're generally free. Um, Noom is not the one that's listed here. My Fitness Pal, Lose It, and Noom and Fitbit. And there's Samsung phone has their own, and there's, there's a number of others out there. Um, my fitness pal is sort of, is the one I use with my patients. So, um, I am not paid by them. Um, I wish I was in some ways, but I am not, I don't work for them. Um, and there are other apps and if, if patients want to use the other apps, that's fine. I mean, I, I don't have a, a horse in the race or whatever the expression is dog in the whatever. Um, my fitness pal though, is one that I'm familiar with. I've used it for 10 years or so. So it's very easy for me to work with my patients on it and help them with it. And as I'm going to tell you here in a few minutes, I've got videos that are already posted on a YouTube channel that kind of walk you through how to do different things on my fitness pal. So if people get stuck on it, I can help them. I can't really help them on Lose It or Noom or Fitbit. Lose uh, Noom is uh, is interesting because they have a lot more engaged kind of environment. So you have dietitians that will pop in and sort of help you kind of live. I guess they have dietitians on staff. So they get uh, you get a little bit more help and guidance and motivation. And some people really like that, you know, but but it's not free. So you do have to pay for that one. Fitness Pal and Lose It are free. They have premium versions. Um, they run a lot of ads on my Fitness Pal to pay for it, which I've definitely been hearing more and more about because they're getting more aggressive with their advertising. But so um, that that's really the biggest the biggest way to go about it now for tracking the calories. There's old school, of course. I mean, paper and pen. I did old school back in the late 90s when I was with Weight Watchers doing their program. Some people today still do that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a little, I think, a little more challenging, um, but definitely it's still doable. Um, the one thing I would say about paper and pen, you're very, very likely to not be recording things like protein, sodium, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, fiber, um, things like that, unless you're just like an accountant maybe, or somebody who's really just passionate about numbers, no one's really gonna record all that nuance with their diet. With the app, it does it automatically. And that gives me a lot of deep insights into people's diet. And I can help them in a lot more rich way than I can with just, well, here's my paper journal, I ate, you know, this many calories. It's like, well, that's good. I can kind of qualitatively look at your journal, but we can't go kind of the next mile. So um, that's one drawback. But, you know, again, um, if it's a choice between, well, I'm either going to do paper and pen or I'm going to throw this in the trash and not do anything, I'd be like, well, please do paper and pen. Um, and you can have success with that. You can lose 100 pounds of paper and pen. Certainly that's still doable. Um, finally, again, recipes, same kind of thing as a menu plan, really. I mean, um, and, and I provide my patients with some links to some popular or some really good, healthy 
websites that have recipes that are easy to do. They're cheap. The calories are listed and you can just pull those calories right off of there and you're done as far as any sort of tracking kind of part of that. So uh, this is uh, an example of what I call a boilerplate kind of basic meal plan uh, for 1500 calories. Uh, the Academy of Nutrition Dietetics has their own meal plans um, that we we get through a service that we have with them. Um, these are not Googleable normally, they're not free, but uh, they are very good basic meal plans. Um, as you can see, you know, this one's like a five day menu and each day you have breakfast, lunch, evening meal and a snack. Now they break it down into different components, which is kind of interesting for some people. I mean, uh, you have exchanges, what we call exchanges. So serving a protein, generally a serving of protein is about seven grams of protein. So, um, you know, each, each one of these days, there's like seven servings of protein. There's 12 servings of carbohydrates, uh, et cetera, fat. Um, and so you can sort of get an idea, you know, how much protein, how much carb, you know, vegetable, fruit, these exchanges that you have when you're looking through it. So it's kind of a kind of a way to break it down and give you an idea, you know, sort of how you're eating and what sort of groups are represented. Um, so what I do sometimes, and admittedly, this is pretty rare, um, at least for what I do. Um, I do get special requests and I will make a very, very custom plan for certain patients. And so it's basically like that same plan you just saw, but in my case, I will um, go through with them and try to figure out what sorts of things they like to eat and then try to create a balanced, healthy menu plan based on those things that they say they like to eat, basically. Um, it is time consuming and Unfortunately, the few times I've done this, <laughs> just being honest here, uh, people don't generally seem to really use it. So, um, you know, but it could be a very valuable tool for certain people. Um, but, uh, yeah, you you got to use it if you if you want it. So <laughs> um, anyway, um, so it's, it's kind of I have this thing here at the meal plan. I have a guide to the plan. And, you know, some of these things are unlimited, meaning they have very few calories in them. Um, and there's some rules kind of like how to go about using the plan. Um, I like to use uh, the hand as a guide, get people idea about volume of things like three ounces of meat is a deck of cards, a uh, cup of chopped vegetables is like a, a baseball, that kind of thing. So that's part of, of some of the education that I give out to people. And that that's a way to kind of help you track and measure too, frankly. I mean, you know, we have we at home we've got food scales. At home we have boxes with labels. But if you're at somebody's house or if you're at a you know some kind of buffet or potluck or whatever, it's kind of good to have an idea. Like, okay, my fist is this is a cup. You know, my fist volume of a fist is about a cup or a baseball about a cup. So when I'm entering it into the app, I can say oh, I had about a cup of um, mac and cheese here. You know, and record it appropriately. That is sort of helpful sometimes um, with meat. Again, you know, if you have some unknown piece of meat on your plate um, and you want to make sure you're getting, usually with meat, it's it's more of an issue of am I getting enough meat, you know? So if you want to make sure you're at least getting an adequate serving of protein, generally you want that deck of cards, probably even a little bigger than that. The deck of cards is three ounces. Uh, a lot of folks need four ounces, maybe even five ounces. Um, so that that gives you that kind of an idea. The thumb is oftentimes used to kind of represent a tablespoon or maybe an ounce of cheese, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, a lot of times it's kind of, I think it's for fatty things that are high in calories. So, uh, you know, usually if you're if you're slicing off much more than a, a thumb size of cheese off a block of cheese, uh, you're probably getting too many calories just in general. So. Um, this is sort of more what that custom plan looks like. Again, there's a breakfast, there's a lunch. Um, what I usually would do is kind of say, you know, choose something from breakfast list, choose something from the lunch list. Um, you know, you don't want to choose obviously two of them at the same time, it'd be too many calories, but, um, and, and you have the option of like, okay, many times per week, you can choose one of these things. Once or twice, you know, you can have the Honey Nut Cheerios, but that is not as healthy. So we really don't want you doing Honey Nut Cheerios all the time. You know, I'd much rather do the regular or maybe just 
you know, in this case, you know, we had some fruit with some eggs and stuff. So that's kind of how I do it. I mean, you you sort of you want to go on the dark side of the of the force. You know, you can sort of eat from one of the the seldom choices, just so that you don't feel like you're locked into some kind of prison of virtue and you know there's no flavor flavorless prison <laughs> of health or whatever. I mean, we can all have small indulgences here and there, and that's that sort of helps us keep on track and keep sane. You know, sometimes. Um, but most of the time, you know, let's say five, six days out of the week, we're really doing the best we can to eat these healthy items. And eventually, you know, a lot of us are not going to be craving the little Debbies and some of that junk as much anymore anyway. And so a lot of times you just sort of gravitate towards, you know, I'm pretty much always in the many, you know, the many times per week side. Um, so again, hello fresh. This is kind of what their website comes up with. Um, since I haven't really dived into that too much, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it here, but that's just kind of a, an idea what the what the website would greet you with. Um, and this is this, uh, oh, what is this one? The, the Magic Kitchen. I can't even read my own font on there. <laughs> it's from their website. Very tiny font, but, uh, but uh, that's kind of what that one looks like. And, uh, you know, you can see down there, they've got senior meals, low carbohydrate, low sodium, vegetarian, renal. So that would be your dialysis, kidney sort of meals, uh, diabetic. So pretty interesting resource for sure. Um, plan to eat and emails. Again, these are specialized services where you can sort of plan things out. Could be very beneficial. Um, Seems to me no one's really using these and I don't promote them because I just, again, I'm not super comfortable with them, but if somebody wants to try them and then report back, sure, go for it. You know, um, I think some of these things have a role and they can help people that are really busy and they can't, you know, put things together all the time. Um, here's Swan's version. Um, so again, they had this live smart option. Um, this tilapia. Uh, I don't even know if they still have this one. I think this was from like a year ago, but they probably still have something like this. So they have that little green symbol for Live Smart, and typically those are going to be, you know, lower in sodium. You know, this is almost no sodium at all. Lower in saturated fat, you know, maybe some fiber sometimes. Um, that's kind of the, the healthier option. Otherwise, sometimes what you run into with Schwann, some of these other services, they can be very high in sodium. So people with high blood pressure, which is real typical with overweight and obesity, you know, um, Schwann's may not, some of these services, you know, you got to be careful and just be smart about it. Look at the labels. Um, so this is one of my favorite tools. And I, I talk about this with my patients all the time. And actually tonight, the meal I'm using is from this website. And I've been cooking a lot of meals actually from uh, the USDA MyPlate website. So easiest way to get to this is I think just Google search or whatever your search engine of choice is, Bing, I guess now is getting popular again or whatever. Type in the words, my plate and recipes, those two words. Um, it says ending session in 30 seconds. I don't know what that's all about. Um, so put in those two words and it'll pull you right into the USDA my plate recipes database. Um, I could almost probably demonstrate it for you. I don't know if I want to rock the boat with my PowerPoint, but if you guys have questions later, I'm happy to kind of pull it up here at the end of the talk and we can kind of browse it together, but it's a pretty cool database. Um, you can search by meal type, you can search by, you know, food type, whatever. And it's about a thousand recipes in there. They're all very, very healthy. And they have the calories posted like this one here, this three can chili. And I, I've made this one before. Um, super simple. I mean, I mean, it's like four ingredients <laughs> and I think one of the ingredients is probably water or something. I don't know. It's like, yeah, beans, corn, tomatoes. Um, and you know, calories right there, six of the recipe, 129. I'd probably, eat, you know, double this. I mean, so maybe, uh, whatever, 260. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, I would highly, highly recommend if you haven't been over there, just check it out. They're all free. It's, you know, free service taxpayer paid, I guess. So, I mean, you paid for it in a way, I guess, but, um, you know, free to browse and check it out and super healthy, pretty good recipes generally, I think. 
All right, so let's see. Can I make this advance? There we go. We just had a little burp there. Um, so Fitness Pal, let's go into Fitness Pal for the next 20, 30 minutes here that we got left for the, the talk portion before I start cooking stuff. So um, this is an old example from a few years ago, but it still pretty much holds true. This example is from the web. So my Fitness Pal, they have a web version and they have an app version on your phone. And you can go back and forth, or if you prefer the computer, you can go there. I think most people prefer the app on their phone because you know the phone's portable, goes with them wherever they are, and they can record as they eat wherever they happen to be, as long as they have their phone with them. Um, but uh, this kind of just gives you an idea, you know, some of the screens you might see on the web. So again, you've got breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, uh, options there to record your foods, and um, you have a big number there by my face there on the left. It's got this big number, it says 1450. So the goal right below that said 1830. So the goal is sort of like, how many calories can I eat for the entire day? So I had 1830 was my budget. And what I've got left is 1450. So that's how much I've got left to eat because it looks like I ate some General Mills Cheerios and some silk, soy milk. So, uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. If you've never tracked before, I mean, it's that's about it. I mean, it's pretty simple to use this generally. Um, sometimes people get stuck on, on little nuances with it, for sure. But the basic premise, pretty simple. I mean, you have a budget, you stay within the budget, um, and you lose weight. And generally, this will dial in usually around a pound maybe a pound and a half per week. I think you can dial in two pounds a week loss. I don't think it'll let you lose faster than that. Generally, the accepted healthy rate of loss is zero to two pounds a week. You really don't generally want to lose faster than two. Yes, I know people do it all the time. You know, they had the biggest loser TV show did it, but it's really not clinically speaking considered to be a healthy rate of loss to go beyond two pounds a week. Um, so um, that's kind of how that looks. This is the app on the phone. So again, calorie goal 1830 there on the left side. If you look at that left panel on the left side of the screen, the goal at the top 1830. I had the 380 calories of the Cheerios and the soy milk, so I'm left with the 1450. So that's how it will look on your phone or, or pretty close to that. Again, this screen snapshots from a couple years ago. So what it's gonna look like now is the same thing, but there'll be an ad stuck in the middle of it probably <laughs> or a video running with an ad on it or whatever. Um, they've gotten very aggressive with the ad marketing and all that. A lot of apps have nowadays, as I'm sure you've seen. Um, and, you know, if you pay $80, you can get the ads go away, uh, but you don't need to pay to use the app. You just have to cope with the ads part of it. So um, the center panel there has the goals. So, um, you know, there, there's a weight goal. There's maybe a goal weight, lose two pounds a week. You know, for instance, you know, if I wanted to go a little faster paced, and uh, on the right side, you know, that might show sort of your weight trajectory, you know, where it is. So that's kind of some of the screens that you might see. Um, so another feature here, this is really useful. And I recorded, I think I alluded to it earlier, but I recorded about six videos going through this process and several other processes of how to use the app, how to record foods. They are on the Carillion Wellness YouTube channel. So again, uh, you know, it's kind of like the other thing I mentioned, if you Google search or whatever your search engine is, type in the words Carillion Wellness YouTube, those three words, it'll pull up their YouTube channel and right away you'll see my videos. I mean, it's, uh, it's right front and center pretty much. So if you're stuck, you don't know how to do certain things, I would just say, please go check this out. Um, and so, but this is an example, I walk through sort of how to do this. So, you know, you go in there, there's a My Meals on this More screen, which you access by hitting this button on the lower right, it says More dot, dot, dot. And that's the box in red. I click on that. That brings up this middle screen. It says Meals, Recipes, and Foods on it. And uh, I want to create a recipe. So um, that middle screen shows a bunch of recipes I already made in the past. But I want to create one, so I click on that thing in the bottom where the red box is again, create a recipe. That brings me to the right panel, the right side of the screen. It says add recipe. That little thing pops up. 
And I want to enter ingredients manually, generally. I don't do add from the web. Um, I haven't really played with that too much. Uh, I probably wouldn't recommend it too much. <laughs> but the enter ingredients manually works. So um, that's how this works. I mean, so you bring up the screen on the left side and you start adding ingredients to the recipe. So here I've added, you know, chicken breast, brown whole grain rice and broccoli. I save the recipe. That's the next panel over. It says save recipe. I give it a name, called it test recipe. Okay. And uh, you have to tell how many servings it is. It's going to serve six. So then when you type in the six there and give it a name, it then gives you the nutrition information per serving. So per serving, 272 calories, 12 grams of fat, you know, 26 grams carb, 12 grams protein, all that. The next screen over says, so here I've created the test recipe and, and you can see it when I'm going to add something for my lunch. So, so I've gone in and I'm not showing this part, but I mean, when you use the, the app, you know, you go in the main, kind of the main screen, the diary screen, and I want to add something for lunch. And I want to add this recipe for my lunch. So there's a thing where you can say, add recipe, you go in there, boom, there's, there's the test recipe right there. It's one of my recipes. So I click on that, test recipe pops right up. I can tell it how many servings did I have. Did I have one, two, three, whatever. And then you click the little check mark there on the, on the panel on the right, far right there. You see a check mark in the upper right. That's how you enter it. So uh, that's kind of it. I mean, uh, I know there could be questions on some of this. And I guess what we can do is maybe when I'm done with this talk, I've got a few more slides left. If people have questions on specifics on the app, I can try to answer the best I can. It's a little hard with, you know, um, I could try to hold my phone up to the camera maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it's a little hard to do it without being in person. But but I'll do my best. If somebody's really stuck on something with the app, I can walk you through it a little bit here. I think we've got some time. The recipe tonight's very, very quick, so there's not a lot of time on that. So that's what I'm here for. If people have questions and stuff. I'm just trying to explain this as best I can. So um, another feature that Fitness Pal has is barcode scanning. Now, unfortunately, that has become a premium feature. So unless you pay the 80 bucks, no barcode scanner for you. Uh, if you use Lose It or maybe some of the other apps, I believe those are still free barcode scanners. Sadly, they, they got rid of the one on Fitness Pal without the fee. But the way it, it works is you just, you know, when you enter your food, you have scan barcode. So I can just pull up a nut or butter here or whatever I'm eating that has a barcode and it just pu pulls it right in. So that's super, super nice to be able to do that. Of course, you know, a lot of our healthiest foods may not have a barcode on them. <laughs> so, you know, you could always make that argument. Well, you know, you shouldn't be eating stuff with barcodes anyway or whatever. Um, but, you know, barcodes happen. I mean, sometimes there's there's peanuts and things. There's healthy foods. There's whole, you know, whole wheat cereal or whatever. There are healthy foods that have barcodes too. So, yeah, so, so there is that tool out there. So that helps tremendously. Um, this is a new thing. I just literally started playing with this this week. I think Tuesday or Monday, I pulled this up. This is a premium feature, at least on Fitness Pal. Now, I don't know if some of the other apps have it. It's not premium. I have a feeling this type of feature is going to really explode in the next few years with artificial intelligence and all these algorithms that they've got. Um, it's still kind of in the infancy stages, but what it is is, you know, when I go to add a food, instead of just searching for a food there using a little magnifying glass or scanning a barcode, I can scan a meal. So you could actually scan an entire meal or you could scan components of it. So here I scan the banana and it pulled the banana right up. It's pretty cool. Um, I tried scanning a few other things, like I had a bag of chips laying around. I scanned that in there, pulled it in. I tried scanning a Subway tuna sandwich. <laughs> It didn't really do too well. Um, I don't, so there's limits to it, but I mean, these things are gonna get better and better over time. So I have a feeling in a few years, we're all gonna be using these apps where it's just like, well, show me what you're eating. It'll probably be a little voice pop on, say, oh, hi, sir, what do you, what'd you eat today? Show them the plate, boom, it just loads it all in there for you. I mean, we're not there yet, but give it time. I mean, the, the world we're in now, it's 
everything's accelerating pretty quickly. Um, so again, these are the video guides I was telling you about. So Carillion Wellness YouTube channel, check it out. If you have questions about the Fitness Pal app, um, that's where to go to kind of see those little demos there. And that, I just put some snapshots of what that web page looks like. Carillion Wellness, uh, they have a YouTube channel. And I don't think a lot of people, I don't know, the video views on that are very small. I don't know if they really accurately represent all the views or not, but uh, it's a good resource. I mean, I, I put my videos on there from these classes and, you know, there's a lot of good information on there. And there's some, some good information from wellness as far as training information, workouts and things too. So it's, it's kind of a good little place to go. Um, so I guess as we kind of come to the end of this whole discussion. I mean, the paper journal is definitely how we used to do things back in the day, obviously, uh, before we had smartphones everywhere. Um, this is an example of maybe how that might look. So uh, one of the things you can sort of do with paper sometimes that these apps are not always so great about is you can record things like mood and hunger level and comments. Some people really value that. And these apps, sometimes they're kind of clunky. They usually have a place you can put comments, but in my experience, it's not very well done, I think. Um, when you do paper, you can make it into a real diary journal kind of experience. Sometimes logging how you feel, you know, if you're getting hit with a lot of emotions, you had a bad day at work or whatever, sometimes those things can trigger us to want to eat more. And then being aware of that, writing it down, that brings awareness to it, and that can help you not give in to that as much. So that is kind of a good tool to use. And that is one thing I think paper has a little bit of an advantage. Um, and you can do it with, with the app. Some people do both. I mean, they have paper and they have the app. And I've seen that too. So, I mean, uh, sometimes they use the app to look things up and they record everything in paper. Which uh, I would say if you're going to do that, I mean, probably just go ahead and record it in the app too. Because the app will still give you the number crunching and, and all that. Some of the finer details of the nutritional analysis. But then you could also transpose it over to paper and, you know, and write some of these additional notes down. And so um, whatever works for you at the end of the day, I mean, uh, there's different ways to kind of get at this. There's a lot of common themes, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to keep ourselves within a certain uh, goal. So. Okay, so um, kind of wrapping it up here with some of these other tools. So that the food scale is pretty important, I think. Um, you know, I never used to think much about food scales until I started really getting into tracking, became a dietitian, and it's like, oh yeah, food scale. That's I'm actually using that all the time. <laughs> so I mean, you can weigh just like it shows in this picture: nuts and seeds, um, you know, cereal. I would say mostly things that have high calorie density. I'm not going to necessarily weigh berries. Um, but for tracking calories, cheese, chocolate, nuts and seeds, cereals, if I'm, you know, um, making a recipe or whatever, maybe I'm even weighing my flour out and stuff like that. It's a very, very helpful tool. They're pretty cheap, you know, super helpful for tracking. More precise than using measuring spoons and cups. If you if you're into these baking channels and stuff, I mean. The bakers, they they weigh stuff out. You know, if you're like really into this stuff and you're trying to be super precise, you're not going to be guesstimating. You're a lot of times you're going to weigh stuff. Um, features you want to look for: ease of use, easy to read, the so-called tear feature. These are all things. I mean, you know, easy to read, sort of qualitative, quanti qualitative as far as like you know, people are going to have different assessments on what they think is easy to read. But this tear feature is pretty much on all of them, I would say. So that means you can put a bowl on there, like they show these different bowls, and you can zero out the scale for the bowl, and then you put stuff in the bowl, and then the numbers start going up. So that's super helpful. Um, I think pretty much these days they're all going to show you either ounces or grams that's what that should say this is ounces or pounds but <laughs> so ounces or pounds or grams or kilograms you know you're going to see metric or english units and that's helpful too because you know a lot of the labels now are more kind of getting into the metric units so uh yeah i'm going to kind of just show you here as i transition over the cooking segment we'll talk a little bit about my little humble scale mine is pretty old and is not the best out there anymore so i probably need to upgrade my gear but it still does a job <laughs> okay so um today's healthy meal that i'm going to get to 
is wheat berry chili. So I have a version of this that I've been eating for years. Uh, actually, it's a little different than this one. Pretty similar, but a little different. Um, there's a guy that's an ultra marathoner who is a vegan. His name is Scott Jurek. He wrote a book about his journey with running and so forth. And one of the things he did was he had a chili recipe in there that he really loved that was vegan. And they used bulgur wheat uh, in there. And that gives you this taste that's kind of like ground beef actually it's kind of interesting kind of gives you a beefy meaty sort of ground beefy kind of texture taste but it's vegan there's like there's no meat in it at all this this particular recipe here that you're looking at comes off the usda my plate uh website and uh this one uh uses wheat berries i actually use bulgur wheat in this too because i just have some bulgur wheat here um but you can you know either way it's just a type of wheat Oops. So what's in it is kidney beans and white beans, bell pepper, uh, of course, the bulgur wheat in my case, or use wheat berries, whatever, wheat kernels, um, and tomatoes. So that's really it. It's very, very simple. Very simple. Um, and so why is this healthy? So the basic idea here, some of the 30,000 foot view of this, this particular menu here meal there's no saturated fat so zero grams that means it's good for your heart for sure not having the saturated fat it's low in sodium again good for your heart good for blood pressure we want to keep the sodium down usually below 300 milligrams if we're watching our blood pressure i try to do it anyway i'm not necessarily worried about my blood pressure these days i have in the past but it's good to just live this way we don't need tons of extra sodium in our foods um, it's high in potassium. That's, again, another heart-healthy item. And just with chili, um, in general, beans, uh, brightly colored vegetables like peppers, tomatoes, they're high in antioxidants. Antioxidants we know are associated with reduced risks of cancers and diseases, and they're just super help, help, helpful for us. Uh, they may also reduce inflammation, and they play a lot of different roles that way that we're still learning about. Um, but this is high in those and low in calories, of course, you know, for weight loss, end of the day, we want to keep our calories down. So the other thing, of course, I'd say is, you know, it's got protein in it, um, 15 grams for this particular serving amount, which is pretty reasonable. Uh, I would probably pair it with maybe a slice of whole wheat bread to dunk it in, you know, a healthy bread product like that, and maybe some fresh fruit. Uh, for the dairy component, you know, if you want to make this a complete balanced meal, you, you sort of want a dairy component. I mean, you can always have a glass of milk with anything you eat or soy milk or whatever, regular milk, soy milk. Um, or you may top it with some sour cream. I've seen that used sometimes in these recipes. So just a couple thoughts on that. And uh, these are the ingredients. So I'll send you guys out this recipe um, so you don't have to, like, scramble to write this down or anything. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, um, I'll have the transcript from today, and I should be able to hopefully send that out to you guys. Um, so, I mean, basically, it's just, you know, you have an onion, bell pepper, chili powder, pepper, a little bit of pepper sauce is optional if you want. Pepper sauces will add sodium, so you got to be a little careful with that. You don't want to go crazy with that necessarily. And then uh, tomatoes. Uh, reduced sodium tomato products, reduced sodium beef broth they use in this one. You could use vegetarian broth too if you don't want any sort of beef product at all. Make it completely vegan if you want. Um, kidney beans and white beans. Try to get them unsalted. I couldn't find unsalted. I was kind of in a hurry and I, I found some regular ones, but you can rinse them off. It gets rid of a lot of the salt that way too. Excuse me. Um, and so really this recipe is ultra simple. I mean, Hardest part is cooking these wheat berry, wheat kernels. I mean, you got to go like an hour boiling those. Once those get softened up and everything, um, then you, um, this this is a little different with this recipe. I've never seen anyone do this before, but it, I mean, it seemed to work, but you take the, the bell pepper and the onion, you chop them up and then you microwave them for a bit to get them soft. Usually you saute these things. Um, just a couple of just culinary notes from my own knowledge of of cooking is I mean usually if you saw if you take the time to saute the onion and the pepper along with the uh, the chili powders or any other seasonings like that um, with just a very small amount of like spray maybe some olive oil sprayed oil that will help enhance some of the flavors and you can caramelize the onion you caramelize the 
you know, the uh, bell pepper, and that brings out some nice flavors, actually. But this, you know, if you're in a hurry and just like, I just need to get this going here, the microwave actually did work. I've never done this, but it, it did work. <laughs> it made them soft, and then you just throw all this in a pot and boil it, and you're you're good to go. So that's what I'm going to show you guys here is, is that. Okay, so I'm going to now unshare this. Uh, and then what I'm going to do real super quick is um, show you guys my scale. So let me see if I can. Uh, it's always fun trying to. Okay, stop sharing. Okay. All right. So it uh, looks like. Uh, Looks like we got some folks here that join. I see Bruce is on there. Um, <laughs> so we got a few people here. So um, let me just show you real quick. Now this is not, again, not rocket science. <laughs> so this is my food scale. Um, this is, I don't even know what brand this thing is, Chef Mate. This is probably something I picked up at Target, you know, maybe 10 years ago, I don't know. Um, the ones that are out there now are definitely, you know, probably more features on there, but, but basically, you know, you turn it on, you get a bunch of zeros on there. I think this has a clock on it and, uh, you know, it's got a little tear button here. So I take my bowl, I'm putting, you know, measure out my Cheerios or whatever, stick the bowl on there, hit the tear button. I get zeros on the display if I did it right. Um, yeah, so it's zero now it says zero grams, and then I pour the Cheerios in there, and then I can say, okay, I had this many grams or this many ounces of Cheerios. That's, I mean, that's it. I mean, that's literally that's all there is to it. Um, I think the last time I looked, you could pick them up for like 15 bucks, maybe. Uh, you know, um, I think every kitchen ought to really have one. It's not a, it's not a huge investment and it's just, it's like measuring spoons and cups and measuring cups and stuff. I mean, uh, you know, why not just have that so you can measure? I mean, another good, you know, just on that kind of topic too. I mean, it's good to have a, a meat thermometer, a food thermometer, so you can make sure that you're cooking things to the, you know, the sort of the food safety temperatures and all that kind of thing. Um, there, there's just a number of little tools like that that are good to have in the kitchen. I, I just think the food scale is great, even if it's not for weight loss. I mean, it's, it's a nice, nice thing to have to kind of give you an idea, you know, your, your, your portions and things and, and how much you're getting. So, all righty. So, um, I'm going to move this camera over to the pots here. I guess before I do that, does anyone have any questions about the app or about the discussion I just had that you want to throw out there real quick before I start moving the camera around to look at the pot? Um, I do have a question. Um, the wheat berries, where do you find those in the grocery store? I've never oh. bought them. So this is what I would recommend. I actually, to me, wheat berries kind of a little bit odd, but this is what I use. It's called bulgur wheat, and it's essentially a wheat berry. It's a type of wheat. It's just whole grain red wheat. So this is essentially the wheat berry, you know, this Bob guy, the red mill with the beard, he has all kinds of crazy flowers and things out there. And he 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 has the bulger. So look for Bob with the little blue hat and the beard. Um, <laughs> that's my best advice on that. You might be able to find some other brands with it too. Um, it's just kind of a, it's just a whole wheat product. It's just, it's whole wheat, super healthy. It's like the entire sort of wheat seed if you will so you don't it's not processed at all there's zero processing really i think this one maybe they chopped it up a little bit i think i don't know they they seem pretty whole to me i don't know if it's even been chopped really much so you boil it for an hour and then it sort of breaks it down and softens it up and stuff like that and that's really about all there's to it and i've I found the i found this guy i mean he's usually you can find him at at, at kroger or food lion you have to look a little bit but it is there. So, yeah, I mean, it, it seems like a little bit of an odd product. And a few years ago, I'd never heard of it either. You know, probably, I don't know, 10 years ago, I'd never heard of any of this stuff. Like, what? What is bulgur? What is this? Um, but it's it's pretty, seems to be pretty popular now. So it's not that hard to find anymore. Okay, thank you. 
So any questions on the tracking part, um, the screens that I showed, anything maybe I can try to answer real quick in the next five, 10 minutes or so, <laughs> hopefully. Anything anyone's stuck on, they've used these tools, they want have a question on something in particular with the app. Okay, so I'm not hearing anything. Um, I think somebody somebody sent a message. Appreciate the resources. Okay, well, if you think of something here, I know sometimes people step away for a moment. You know, they go to the bathroom or whatever. And if you come back in and you have a question, just go ahead and fire off the question. What I'm going to do is move the camera over to the stove here and just show you real quick this. This is a real, you know, pretty simple thing. So I I always kind of prepare my stuff ahead because I don't really think there's a lot of value. And the, the, the type of class that I do, at least, it's not a cooking class. So I don't sit there and show, like, this is how you chop an onion. This is how I, you know, whatever, peel the potato. I, I don't do that. So <laughs> so I try to just, you know, make it kind of quick. So basically, in this big pot here, uh, what size pot is this thing? This is a 28-cup pot. So I don't know how many, probably six, eight quarts or whatever. Pretty big pot. So this is the beef broth. This is the water. This is the two types of beans. This is chopped tomatoes in there and some chili powder, a little bit of hot sauce thrown in for fun and some, you know, that's about it. There's not a whole lot more in there. This is the, I'll show you this. This is the bulgur wheat. I don't know if you can see that at all. Oh, well, that comes on the camera, but it sort of just looks like a cereal product, and it kind of is, I guess. You know, it's it's wheat. So, uh, so that's about a cup of that after it's been boiled for an hour. Obviously, it takes up a lot more volume. It soaks in a lot of the water. So all you got to do is just sort of combine these things. So I'm going to combine it very carefully because I've learned that if I don't, I have tomato sauce splattered all over my wall, and that's not a good look. So. Let's get that on there. All right. And then the only other part was the microwaved uh, bell pepper. So I used the kind of the yellow, orangish kind of bell pepper and onion. And I use I always use kind of sweet onion. I like the flavor of those. So that was one onion, kind of moderate size, medium to large and a bell pepper and you microwave it. What I had to do is microwave it for kind of on medium uh, percentage power, or whatever, for about four minutes is what I found, soften these things up. Again, if you wanna do an alternative approach, which is probably gonna taste a little better, uh, I would saute these in just a very minimal amount of olive oil, get them caramelized, um, <clears throat> And then once you're done with that, then dump them into the pot like this. Um, I would caramelize them along with the uh, with the with the seasoning. So that's literally it, though. I mean, uh, other than just showing you chopping it, all I'm going to do now is just heat this thing up. Um, you know, put the lid on it. And that's pretty much it. So that's my dinner for the next several days. <laughs> So super healthy, vegetarian, and I think it is kind of good to mix it up and have some vegetarian meals within your week. Um, you know, a lot of people struggle getting fiber. I see it all the time in the journals. And what I'll say about that is, I mean, we know that we're pretty confident now in the research that's come out that the so-called highly processed foods lead to obesity. And I mean, there's been... There's a guy, if you want to look him up, Dr. Kevin Hall. Um, he's a pretty famous researcher in this field. And he did a, a controlled, careful study, sort of a lab environment, hospital environment, where some people were given only super processed foods in one, in one group. Another group, they're only allowed to have whole foods, minimally processed foods. And they were allowed to eat as much as they wanted. But, but within those constraints, like this one group, they could only have, you know, Chef Boyardee and whatever, stuff out of boxes and cans. 
The other group, they could only have fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, fresh meats, almost no processing. So left to their own devices, told, you know, eat whatever you want. The people in the minimally processed group lost weight. The people in the processed group gained weight. So, I mean, that tells you something, right? <laughs> That's kind of scary to me. Um, and we have hand-waving reasons out there. I mean, there's people that write books with theories about why it's happening. and But I don't know that we precisely know. It's probably multiple things. You know, it could be, you know, sugar could be very well part of it. Um, it could be just the processing, the nature of the processing, you know, stripping out, certainly stripping out fiber, maybe stripping out some of the nutrients in the per process of processing it. You know, maybe we're, you know, our digestive system somehow, you know, it, it's it's reacting in a strange way and making us more hungry somehow, not as satisfied. Um, I know for myself, and I, you know, a lot of my patients say the same thing. I mean, when they eat a lot, you know, fast foods or just, you know, less so-called clean eating, you know, they, they know they're eating kind of, kind of junky stuff. They feel, you know, they, they, they don't feel as satisfied with their meals. They, they're more, they seem to be kind of more inclined to just keep eating. Um, and when they eat in a so-called more clean way, they, they feel, you know, more energetic. They feel more satisfied after their meals. I mean, so I think these things are real factors and all that. So getting back to my chili here, <laughs> um, so it's high fiber, you know, beans are kind of, you know, sort of a, a super food, I guess you could say. They're super, super healthy. I mean, they're they're kind of a cancer fighter, um, high protein, high fiber. Uh, you really can't go wrong with them unless you dump a lot of sugar in them or something. Um, and so, you know, uh, I, th I think if we can have some of these in the rotation, I think it's not just going to help us lose weight, but, you know, maybe extend our lives to some degree. Um, I, that's what I at least like to think about it from, from everything that seems to be coming out about, you know, a Mediterranean diet and these healthier ways of eating. So that's, that's kind of my uh, spiel on all that. Uh, does any, anyone have any questions on anything about the meal maybe, or I don't know. Uh, recipe websites anything that you've heard anything else that maybe you haven't heard but you got a question about you guys are quiet hopefully it doesn't mean you've all wandered off somewhere <laughs> that's one nice thing about in person you guys can't wander off anywhere and i can call on you can't really do that as well with this <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, this says really good information. So I'm going to call on one person in particular. Uh, I don't know, Bruce. Are you out there? Can you unmute? Are you are you hearing me? see him there i know he was pretty interested in joining tonight and i see him on there not to put anyone on the spot but i'm putting him on the spot because <laughs> he specifically said he was interested in some questions um well okay uh you know if there's not any other questions um i guess what i'll say is i can kind of wrap things up for tonight and what i'll i'll do is generally on Monday or so next week, I'll send out the recipe from tonight, and just so you guys have that as a as a reference, and uh, I may have some other materials I can throw in from tonight's talk as well, and uh, just stay tuned. I mean, uh, keep looking at the Karelian well, uh, calendar. If you go to the Karelian website, pull down their calendar, you're going to eventually see these other classes showing up. I'm going to turn this thing down. Um, uh, but like I said, end of May, the rule I always do with these classes is last Thursday of the month. So end of May, last Thursday of May, we're going to try to do our first in-person class again. And so they, then you'll actually get to eat the chili or whatever I make uh, instead of just looking at it through a, a camera. So, all righty. Well, thanks everyone for joining. I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week.
and take care. I'll wave goodbye. <laughs> okay, bye-bye for now. <laughs>